I'd like to tell you a little bit about somebody who is on my mother's side of the family, um, who I'm kin to, distant, distant, distant relatives, just makes it more interesting. It's something that I had always wanted to know more about, a person that I'd wanted to know more about. And I titled this speech, Seriously Funny, because this person was, they started out as an actor in Hollywood um, in the late 1800s early 1900s, uh, very successful at that, but then they had a lot of um, knowledge in politics, and uh, they they used to get their point across, but included a big sense of humor in the process to uh, make it easier for the other side of people to understand where they're coming from and laugh, kind of laugh about it. Um, I'm talking about Will Rogers. Will Rogers was a famous actor and political commentator. Reciprocated in his friends, fans, presidents, and even world leaders. He had a way of slapping you while he picked you up. That is a great art, and Rogers certainly was great. The next one is from someone that you'll know for sure, President Franklin Roosevelt. And he said, his humor and his comments were always kind. His was no biting sarcasm that hurt the highest or the lowest of his fellow citizens. When he wanted people to laugh out loud, he used the methods of pure fun. And when he wanted to make a point for the good of mankind, he used the kind of gentle irony that left no scars behind it. I thought that was, you know, really, really significant coming from President Franklin Roosevelt. Rogers uh, acted in 71 films and three Broadway shows. Some of his films that you might recognize were... Life Begins as Ken Kennesaw H. Clark, uh, G. Wiz Guinevere, he played Thomas Brown in the film Doubting Thomas, Ichabod Crane in The Headless Horseman, and Peep O'Day in Boys Will Be Boys. It was in 1918 when Will first began acting in silent films before filmmakers had the ability to include audio. The films at that time were black and white and included subtitles. A couple of his first talking movies, they called talkies, um, they had to see Paris in 1929 and State Fair in 1934. It was soon after this when Will became a national star, and in 1934, he was also voted the most popular male actor in Hollywood. Throughout his career, other doors opened for Will, giving him new opportunities. He wrote 4,000 syndicated columns in six books, which launched his radio career in broadcasting and success as a political commentator. Will Rogers' writings and sayings continue to be relevant in politics even today. He is still recognized and remembered for his wit and humor by audiences everywhere. The Will Rogers Institute provided funding for the research of pulmonary disease as a fitting memorial to the man who loves all human beings. One of my favorite quotes by Will Rogers goes like this. If you want to be successful, it is just this simple. Know what you are doing, love what you are doing, and believe in what you are doing. Other services and programs can be found on the Will Rogers Motion Picture Pioneers Foundation website. The Will Rogers Hospital and Memorial Fund was formed in 1935 following his unfortunate recent death in a plane crash. 
The mission statement of Will Rogers Institute is as follows. The Will Rogers Institute is a national health organization dedicated to the support of lung research and developing new treatments and cures for pulmonary disease and disorders. The history of the hospital began throughout the 1920s and 1930s with a lot of vaudevillains of that time. A vaudeville performer offers a variety of short acts, such as slapstick turns, song and dance routines, and juggling. Tuberculosis was common and fast-spreading disease amongst these performers. During that time, they were often treated as, you know, outcasts uh, who were subject to cold dressing rooms, drafty theaters, and damp hotels. The National Vaudeville Artists founded a lodge at Saranac Lake, New York. It served as a convalescent home for performers who were afflicted with TB. The mission of the hospital was to treat their patients as welcome friends instead of outcasts. The hospital was doing great but began to struggle finance, financially. Because if you'll think back during that time, there was an ongoing national depression, and also due to the fact that the era of the vaudeville phase of entertainment was on the decline. The NVA decided to transfer at that time the hospital's responsibilities to the Will Rogers Memorial Commission. The commission did agree to take over responsibility and extended uh, the benefits of the program in the hospital to all people in entertainment. And this uh, ended up adding a significance to Will's memorial as the man who loved all mankind. The commission's corporation name was changed to the Will Rogers Memorial Fund and the hospital remained the will was renamed the Will Rogers Hospital in May of 1936.